father gave his life to build this bridge. June 12th, 1912. He fell off that tower right there and landed in the water there. After they fished his body out, the 
coroner said his stomach was full of gin. That's why I don't drink. I've always wondered about cops who have had to tell wives that their husbands are dead. I've never had that opportunity. I'd like to. I would have made a good cop. Well, yeah, it's, the name's Tim Brown. He was the previous owner of the house. I used to get his mail all the time. Oh, he's deceased. Huh. Huh. Well, okay, so what do you want me to do with the package? Really? Is that legal?
so therefore you should not exist. What kind of bug are you? What? I can try that. I wish we could have stayed another week. I really like Tacoma. Mom sure loved having you. She spent more time doing things with you than she did me. Yeah, Grandma's pretty cool. Which is kind of weird too, in a way, you know? What do you mean? Well, she kept asking me if I had any girlfriends. I, I swear she must have asked me that like 10 times while we were there. What'd you tell her? Oh, I tried to tell her that Jenny broke up with me. But then five minutes later, she'd say, Oh, Kenny, I bet you have plenty of girlfriends. You're so charming, blah, 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 blah. I should have just lied to her and said, Yeah, Grandma, I got plenty of girlfriends, tons of them. Sometimes you just have to tell her what she wants to hear. There's no harm in doing that. Why does Grandma hate Dad so much? Ah, that's kind of a strange story. I don't know if you really want to hear about it. Yeah, I do, sure. Well, it really happened before your father was born. Your grandmother had him late. She was in her 40s. And he was unplanned and she didn't want him. She couldn't have an abortion back then because it was illegal. So she prayed for a miscarriage, but that didn't happen. And then she tried to end the pregnancy. She took all kinds of drugs, drank excessively, she ended up in the hospital for six weeks. But your father, Paul, he was determined to live. He was a strong baby. Then when she had him, she was thinking about giving him up for adoption, but instead she stuck him in a cardboard box and put him on the doorstep of a pipe factory on Christmas Eve. He nearly froze to death. Wow, that's, that's really sad. That's how your father ended up in the orphanage. He didn't meet her until he was grown. She didn't care, it didn't make any much difference. She still couldn't stand him. Yeah, I knew they didn't get along very well, but I never knew why. How come she likes you so much? I don't know. We just hit it off. It seems like we've always gotten along. Maybe she just hates babies.
Okay, you gotta get your bag? Mm, I'll get it later. Oh, Alright. Feels good to be home, doesn't it? Yeah. Mom took us to the zoo. I shot two whole rolls of film. I think I probably shot 24 pictures in the monkey house alone. They had this orangutan there that I swear could have been your twin Pauls. Seriously, I even asked grandma if she gave birth to twins and sent the retarded one to the zoo. And she said, no, I sent the retarded one to the orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> So did you get a chance to work on your memoirs? Oh, you on? yeah, it's going kind of slow, but, you know, it's, it's coming. Well, you know, all those kind of things take time. Yeah, yeah, I want to get it right. I mean, I want to make sure all the data is there, and so when I pass it on to Kenny, he's going to have everything, and it'll be really easy for him to pass it on to his kids someday. Now, it's really too bad you couldn't have come to Tacoma with this. Mom is a wealth of information. Mm -hmm. She's still sharp as a tack, wouldn't you say, Kenny? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. Can you tell us about the time when you first found her, when you were 24? And she invited you to dinner, and you got in this big old fight with some guy she was living with. That was not a fight. That was totally unprovoked. It was an assault. She said you took the biggest piece of chicken. Well, so what if it was the biggest piece of chicken? Does that give that jackass a right to put my head through the wall? I mean, that's ridiculous. Okay, she broke up with him after that. Yeah, a year later. And you know what? She never paid the hospital bills. You know, I was pretty naive back then, but if it happened now, I would have gone back and I would have killed him. What is with the lock on that door? Oh, that, yeah, we, we've been having some terrible wins. I had to, I had to secure the door. Wind? What are you talking about? I mean, that door doesn't even go to the outside. Well, yeah, that's the point. I'm thinking ahead. You see, if the big door outside gets blown out, I have no way of knowing when that door is going to get blown out. I mean, uh, so it's better just to keep it secure all the time because that door is really important. If it comes into the house, anybody can... All right, I, well, I'm going to need a key, Paul. I only have one key, but I'll have one made. In the meantime, if you guys need anything for the garage, let me know. I mean, Kenny, do you need anything? I can go get it. Oh. Can't think of anything. If the hinges haven't flown off the garage door yet, then why don't you just leave it unlocked? It defeats the purpose of thinking ahead. I don't know when that door is going to blow. We can just use the outside door, Mom. It's no problem. Yeah, I, uh, I bolted that one from the inside. What the hell for? What are you doing in there, Paul? I've got a big project going in the garage, and I can't have anybody going in there messing it up. Um, when I am done, you guys are going to be so happy with it, because I'm doing it for you. It's, it's a big surprise. Surprise? For us? Huh. I wonder what it is. Is it a pool table? <laughs> no, no, no guessing. Wow. Just, just, but I'm going to be spending a lot of time in there, okay? And I just need, I need some privacy in there. But it's, when it gets done, you're going to love it. Really? What do you want? Paul, what? What 
are you doing in there? What's going on? I'm working on my project. Well, are, are you coming to bed? Yeah, I'll be there in a few minutes. Do you want me to wait up for you? Svina, just go to bed. Don't wait up for me. of this lighthouse and there was this terrible storm I mean it was windy it was rainy the waves were just pounding against the base of the lighthouse so hard that we thought we were gonna die and then the storm kind of like it, it subsided and we got up the next morning and we walked on the beach and we saw Kenny and Cloudy they were washed up on the shore they were the only survivors of this ship that sank in the storm and Cloudy had this really weird smell in his mouth. And then I remember looking down at the beach and I saw this tornado, only it was made out of water. And it was coming at us. And so we grabbed Kenny and we went running to the lighthouse. That would be a water spout. No, it was on the beach and it was a water tornado. I think it was the last vestige of the storm. Anyway, Cloudy dropped the snail because the tornado was making this howling noise and he went running to the lighthouse and it was coming at us faster and faster. It was terrifying. That's it? Yeah. And I woke up. It doesn't sound very scary, but it just... It left me with this dreadful feeling. You know how dreams can do that? Anyway, it's the last day of my vacation. I gotta go to work tomorrow. I was thinking maybe we could do something fun like go shopping. Shopping for what? I could shop for some new living room curtains. What's the matter with the ones we have? <laughs> Besides the fact that they're old and ugly. I like the curtains. They match our furniture. Well, we could go shopping for something else. I mean, for that matter, we could go window shopping. We could go to lunch and make a day of it. It'd be fun. I gotta finish my project. Do you know how long you have been in the garage? No. Well, I do. Let's see, you went in there last night after dinner and you didn't come back out until you went to bed, and that was at 2.30. See, that was, that's about seven hours. And now you wanna go back in there? No, I gotta finish it. What's that strange light? It goes Look, on Spina. On. See it underneath the door. Never mind that light, okay? Look, the more you get curious about this project, the more you're gonna ruin it, okay? So just let it go. All right, so you don't wanna have any fun with me. Okay, have fun in the garage. Okay, Paul, I'm gonna go shopping without you. I'm gonna get some living room curtains. And I want you to mow the lawn, it looks horrible. There was, there was a lake, and I used to go fishing there.
you doing? I thought you were going to mow the lawn. The lawn mower's broken. Well, then borrow the neighbors. I don't want to. What on earth are you doing, Paul? I'm on a backyard safari. Did you know there's more wildlife in the backyard than anyone could possibly? Well, why don't you take a little break from your safari and come help me bring the groceries in the house, okay? I thought you were shopping for curtains. Sheila, come with me, Tim. I want to show you something. I'm not Tim. My name is Paul Mantel. You have me confused with somebody else. Tim Brown is dead. No, your name is Tim Brown. Time is short, Tim, and there is much I need to show you. Take my hand and come with me.
thank you. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm Tim. Tim. I'm Dixie. So how are you doing tonight? I'm doing really, really good. Really good. good. So Dixie, I'm a little lonely and uh, I thought I might interest you in some dinner. Oh yeah? How about uh, $40? Dinner plus the $40. Well, dinner and $40. Sounds like a deal. Excellent. Hop in. All right. You don't do anything. You don't work. The least you could do is mow the lawn. I mowed it last month. Well, it needs to be mowed every single week. It's still summer. It doesn't need to be mowed every week. I talked to your mother about this extensively. She thinks we should divorce. What? You know she begged me not to marry you in the first place? Somehow that makes perfect sense. She tried to save me from throwing my life away. She knew I deserved something better than you. What a fool I was. Look, if you're not happy, you're free to go. I'm not Oh, no, 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 no. You are not getting off that easy, Paul. Okay, 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 okay. Why don't I go? Would that make everything no, easier? No, no, that would not make everything easier. You know what I would like, Paul? I would like you to stand up and start acting like a man for once. Can you do that? Can you quit acting like a child and take some responsibility for this mess that you created? Or are you just going to sweep everything under the carpet and then run away and pretend like nothing ever happens? You know what, Paul? You can start by getting a, a job. Money for we already used all our money, man. He did that to you? Yeah, he punched me right in the eye, man, when I stepped on his tarp. Right. My foot touched the tarp, right? I don't think I, don't think I asked you with your eyeball. Is it you? Yeah. You're such an idiot, man. Is that back there? My eyeball's still there. It's just, uh, he busted me. me up, man. Gentlemen. Anyway, Ralph, you gotta really, you gotta watch out for me. How'd Ralph, you like man. to make some easy money? Did you say easy money? Mm -hmm. Well, that depends, man. What are you trying to push? Yeah, well, my name is Tim Brown. I'm a casting director for Liberty Continental Pictures. We're doing a major shoot for a major film up in the Mount Hood National Forest, and really? we happen to be short two extras. Are you serious? Mm hmm Hey, you see that? There's not a lot to do. It's really easy work. I mean, we I just need you running through the forest, acting like you're scared, and maybe stand around during a couple of the logging scenes. So, so it's a film about loggers, right? Well, it's actually, a movie? 
It's a movie about loggers that battle space aliens in the Oregon woods. It's sort of like a science fiction horror. Oh, film. far out, man. That sounds sweet. sweet. Wow. Let's believe this is. It pays $50 now, $50 when you're done. Like 100. 50 plus 50 for me? So you mean 100 for both of us, right? 50 plus I don't have to 50 share with this chump, right? I don't have to share with him. That is, it depends though. I mean, do you think it's too much of a stretch? No, for a man. Logger? No, man. Look at my name's no. Jack. I'm like a jack of all trades, you know, something like that, right? I, I can do it, man. I know I can do it. I don't know about him, Dork but I know I can trades. do it. I'm Willie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hold on a second. I gotta check with somebody. Check it. I think I should shower. The lake is right there. We can shower before we go. Hey, Mitch. Hi. Hi, it's me. It's Tim. Uh huh. Look, uh, I think I got the two extras for that shoot today. Yeah. No. No, they're gonna they're gonna be perfect. Excellent. Perfect. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. So you're gonna have uh, makeup and wardrobe ready. Okay. Well, we'll see you when we get there then. Okay. Bye bye. Gentlemen. Welcome to the movie industry. Oh man, this is gonna be great, dude. Where's the money, man? Where's the money? It is fifty for you. Take it, man. It's real? That is real, man. They had that little bar here. You gotta check that. <laughs> That's real money. Gentlemen, right this way, please. Come on, get your stupid bag. We going now? Okay, awesome. <laughs> You know, we're filming in a clearing about a mile up. This is as far as the road goes. Oh, smell that fresh air, man. Last year I was in Mexico City, and the air was so bad, I was like smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. It gave me the worst headache I ever had. Is that right? You know, uh, I expected some trailers and people around here. Where's where is everybody? Oh, hey, we fly everything in by chopper. This is no small potatoes operation. Liberty Continental does everything first class. Oh, yeah? How, how come they didn't fly us in? We're just extras, you dip. You know how much it costs to fly people and stuff all the way up here by chopper? Well, come on, boys, we're burning daylight. Oh. Use your brain. Lighter. No smoking on the set, Willie. We don't want any forest fires. Ooh. Who's the star of this movie? Michelangelo DiCaprio. Right, no, you mean Leonardo DiCaprio, right? No, no, no. This is his kid brother, Michelangelo. Oh, really? Yeah, Hollywood insiders say he's going to be the next Keanu Reeves. He's going to be huge. You know, this is going to be his big breakout picture. Wow. You think we, ha we actually meet him? Oh yeah, Mike makes it a point to meet everyone who works on the set. He's a great guy. Wait a second, what's the name of this picture? It came for friendship but found food. Oh, sweet man. So these aliens, they're going to eat, eat us, right? Suck your brains right out of your skull. That's, that's what I'm talking about, man. That sounds so cool. Man. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, we're coming up to one of the sets now. Where? Oh, it's just up ahead. Hey, Mitch, it's Tim. Hey, tell Harvey to let makeup and wardrobe know that I got the two extras. And I'm gonna need release forms. I didn't have any in the car. Okay, we'll be there real soon, okay? okay Willie, dude, look at that. What? Tim? What is that thing?
thing? Well, in the script, we call it the hive. It's sort of the uh, base of operations for the aliens. That's where they live. Tim, dude, I ain't never seen anything like that. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a compliment. It is going to look fantastic on film. Now, the rest of the crew is up in the next clearing, so they're getting ready for a logging scene, but we'll be there pretty soon. What? Uh, What's that noise, Tim? Well, that's just the equipment. Don't worry about it. But, uh, what, what is that? Those are the aliens. I thought you guys used computers for that kind of stuff, no, man. No, 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 no. Computer graphics is way oh. too fake. Audiences have become so much more sophisticated, we've gone beyond that. These are special mechanical puppets designed in Italy. No stuff? Yeah, if you look real closely, you can see the wires holding them up. Yeah, I think I can see the wires. Yeah, those wires are coated with a special paint. It doesn't show up on photographic film. Oh, really? Yeah, each puppet has an actor inside. Oh. Huh. That one coming toward us? Yeah. That's Michelangelo. Uh, that's Mike? Michelangelo? Yeah, he's coming to greet you. You think I can go, go greet him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go. Hey, Mike. Tim Brown, he says you're going to be the next Keanu. Such a mess. I want my money back. I want it clean. So long, Willie. No, I'm not joking. He has been acting so weird. I think he's on drugs. And not to mention the fact that he put a lock on the door between the garage and the kitchen. He says he's working on some secret project. I think he's just hiding something in there. Yeah, well, he's finally losing his mind. To be honest with you, he's beginning to frighten me. No, he's not here right now. He went out job hunting. Yeah. Oh, hey, Heather, Paul just got home. I gotta go, all right? Look, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye. I heard voices. Yeah, I was talking to Heather. Where did she go? Well, I, she was on the telephone. Oh, I thought someone was here. Well, well what does she want? She didn't want anything. Then why did she call? No, I called her. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was wanting to know how she was doing. I, I haven't talked to her in a long time. Well, how is she? Oh, yeah, she's doing fine. She says George is taking her to Camden for their fall vacation. Camden. Yeah, it's really nice this time of year. Oh, that's in New Jersey, isn't it? Isn't that where the soup comes from? Oh, no, it's near Philadelphia. So, did you have any luck job hunting today? Not really. Did you know that in Mexico City the air is so polluted that just living there is like smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. Imagine what that would do to my emphysema. 
You don't have emphysema, Paul. Who are you calling? What's Heather's number? You do not believe I was talking to her. You think I was talking to another man or something? Why else would you want a divorce? Heather's number, please. Ugh. It's ringing. Heather! Hi! Hey, it's Paul Mantell. Yes, you were speaking with Spina just a few moments ago. Yeah. Hey, listen, um, Spina said you and George were going on vacation, but she doesn't remember what city you were going to. Yeah, well, you know, I hate, a, I hate an unfinished story. Well, good. Excellent. Well, well, I hope you and George have a wonderful vacation in Camden. Okay. Bye-bye. What? I had to be sure. Sure about what, Paul? You have to call my friends and embarrass me? What is wrong with you? They're going to think you're a lunatic. Why would they think that except that you're putting that in their minds? No, I'm not. Where do you think you're going? I'm going fishing. Kitten or baby alligator? Um, kitten. No, baby alligator. Okay, pound for pound, badger or platypus? That's a good one. Thank you. And tougher than you might think. Did you know that the, uh, the male platypus has a poisonous stinger. No, that changes the whole equation. I'm gonna go with the platypus. If we had a butterfly versus, say, a hawk, you're yes. still going to go with butterfly? Yes, absolutely. I don't buy it. What? I don't buy it. Pound for pound, a butterfly will beat a hawk. I mean, they, they have an exoskeleton. They're basically armor-plated. Okay, fine, you're right, okay? Okay. I'm just tired, that's all. Too tired to keep going? No. How much longer is it? I don't know, maybe like five miles? Five miles? That's not far. Whatever. Whatever. You totally do it. I know. Welcome to God's country, Kenny. Yeah, but it'll be good to get out of the house for a few days. Get away from your mom. She's been on my back, driving me nuts. I don't know what's wrong with her. Actually, I do know what's wrong with her. You wanna know, you want me to tell you? She's got all her crazy ideas about love and romance from those stupid soap operas that she watches all the time. And I've, I've seen those soap operas, and they, they try to make the men act just like women. And men don't act that way. They're all lovey-dovey, mamby-pamby, walking around with stars in their eyes, crying about their relationships. What a bunch of sappy garbage. I have never met a man who acts that way. Watching those soap operas is driving your mom nuts. Look, I know, that's a horrible thing to say. I know you love your mom, and I love her too, but... One day, Kenny, you'll be older, and you'll be married, and you will know exactly what I'm talking about.
Well, hey. Anyway, thanks for coming up here with me. Yeah, well, I needed the money. What lake is that? Does it have a name? No. Don't think so. It's beautiful. Does the trail go down there? No. Makes me want to go swimming. Let's hike down there. Um, I don't know. That's stagnant water. It's probably swarming with amoebas, basically. Well, is that dangerous? Uh, yeah, they crawl in through your nose, and then they make their way to your brain, hmm. and they multiply and eat your brain tissue up. The result is death, pretty much. That's so cool. <laughs> So I get two eggs, hash browns, two pieces of bacon, some toast and coffee, and my uncle orders the same exact thing, and it comes to $17.50. I mean, can you believe that? Sounds about right, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Oh. I mean, how much do eggs cost? You can get a dozen of them for what, $2? I mean, that means that they're about 16 cents each. So my eggs were 32 cents. I mean, how much do two slices of bacon cost? Quarter? I mean, you can get two slices of white bread for under a nickel each, so there's a, what, another dime? So that's like 65 cents worth of food? <laughs> you can get a 10 pound bag of potatoes for under two dollars, making that hash browns dirt cheap. I mean, I had six ounces, so that's like, you know, a nickel's worth? Wow. And don't even get me started on that coffee. That stuff is 99% tap water anyway. And you can get a cup of tap water for under a penny. So, that's like 70 cents worth of food. Let's just say it's actually worth a dollar. My uncle orders the same exact thing, which is two dollars worth of food, and they charge us 17.50. That's outrageous. Well, they have to pay for all the help and cooking it and stuff. I mean, how is the service? Horrible. Really? Well, you didn't leave a tip? A tip, a tip. I'm already paying $17.50 for $2 worth of food, and you want me to leave a tip I've for worked, what? I've worked as a waitress. It's hard work. Restaurants are a rip-off anyway. I mean, I can cook better than any restaurant anyway. I'm going to save my money and just cook for myself. Okay. Can you hear that? You hear what? I don't... There it is again. Hold on. What is that? I don't hear shh, anything. Shh, shh, shh. Are you telling me you don't hear that? Yeah, I, I hear it now. Maybe it's an airplane. No, I don't think so. I don't know. It's too low and it stops and starts. It's really weird. You're trying to scare me, aren't you? No, of course not. I don't like hearing sounds in the forest that I can't identify. Where is it coming from? could be a bear. Well, I got bear spray for that. Come on, that's not a bear. I've never even seen a bear out here. They hear you coming and they run away. Kathy, I really think we should go back. Well, it doesn't make any sense to go back, you know? It's further that way. Well, the 
this trail makes a loop and we've already gone more than halfway, so it's, it's easier to keep going. Come on. It could be dangerous. Did you know what the most dangerous thing in the forest is? Uh, like other people? That's a good guess, but it's actually bees. Yeah, I, re I read somewhere that Bees kill more people every year than any other animal. You don't think that noise could be like a hive of bees or something, do you? No. Are you allergic to bee stings? I hope not. Well, let's go. remember this place. We used to come up here all the time to skip rocks. I don't remember that. We came up here every summer till you were 10 and you lost interest. I guess you never caught the fishing bug. You used to love coming up here with me. You know, I do not remember that at all. Has it changed much since then? Hasn't changed a bit. I see why I stopped coming up here. This place gives me the creeps. Hey Kenny, I bet I can skip a rock farther than you can. Nah, uh, big deal. What do you think, huh? Oh, now that's beginner's luck. Skipping rocks is not a game. There's no luck involved. Do it again. I don't want to scare the fish. That's why you came up here, right? Hey, Kathy. What? You wait up. I need, I need to rest a minute. Oh. Oh, God. What is that? I don't know. Let's go look at it. Okay. Hope it's not a homeless guy. Can I hold the bear spray? Absolutely not. I don't know how to use it. Fine. What the hell is that thing? You don't know what it is? Well... I've seen caterpillars make cocoons, but not this big. There's something inside. Oh. 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 
Kenny, have I ever told you the legend of the green eyes? It's a true story. It happened here around 50 years ago. Two men and two women were on their way to Carson's Lodge on a ski trip when their car became disabled. Now Carson's Lodge is about 40 miles up the main road, but they took a wrong turn and ended up on the same road that we came up today. Needless to say, the road was in bad shape, and when it began to snow, they got stuck. They saw a very dim light up through the trees, and thinking it might be the lodge, they set out on foot. They hiked about a mile through the forest and came to an old camp. One of them tried the doorknob and discovered that it was unlocked. They entered the cabin. It consisted of three rooms, a bedroom, a kitchen, a shaking and pale living room, almost hysterical, blabbering about his friend's missing heart about how there was just a big gaping hole in his chest where his heart should have been. As he sat in the living room, he stared into the fire for a long time, wondering what could have killed his friend. Then he noticed something that chilled him to the bone. There were two glowing green eyes watching him from behind the fire. Just then the eyes vanished confirming his dread that they were the most
I am done competing with you. I should have done this years ago. for a couple days. Where's Kenny at? Oh, I dropped him off at Matt's, yeah, Guitar Hero. Hey, look, before you go into the house, I gotta tell you something, okay, Paul? Paul, wait, 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 wait. Before you go into the house, wait, Paul! Paul, I just wanna tell you something, Paul. I have to tell you, hey, 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 sit what? down, sit down, what? sit down! I gotta tell you something. What? I went into the garage. I had to find out what, did what you was do? going on. Oh, shh, listen. I went into the garage. I had to find out what was going on. I took the lock off the door. And I found your little friend. Athena, what are you talking about? What friend? Ah, your stupid little rock. Jasper! Yeah, that's right. And I did what I should have done years and years ago. I got rid of it. What did you do to Jasper? I threw him in the river. You drowned Jasper? Yes, I did. I drowned him. Oh, I... I I, I don't believe you. He's dead, Paul, and I killed him. Ha! Jasper! Oh, God! <laughs> I don't believe What did you do to Jasper? <laughs> You couldn't have hurt me more if you had stuck me through the heart with an ice pick. I didn't mean to hurt you. I know you don't understand. I was actually trying to help. He was my best friend. <laughs> Did I ever tell you how we met? No, I don't think so. I was at the orphanage. I didn't have any friends. All the other kids hated me. I used to play by myself in a field. And that's where I met Jasper. sit down and talk to him, and he listened to me. He was my best friend. If I didn't have anybody to talk to, I, I would have gone crazy. I would have gone insane. A year after I left the orphanage, I came back, and he was still there, and I took him with me. And we've been together ever since. Paul, oh, that is the most childish stupidity I've ever heard of. This is extremely personal. I'm burying my soul, for God's sakes. The pet rock fad went out years ago in the 70s, along with mood rings and feathered hair. He wasn't a pet. He was my friend. He was my best friend. He was my oldest friend. I, I love Jasper. You know, that friend of yours is what has kept us apart for all these years. You told me 15 years ago that you got rid of him. You lied to me, Paul. How do you think I felt when I found out that you didn't? God. 
I wish it would have been another woman. I mean, I could have dealt with that. But now I have to go through the rest of my life knowing that this stupid rock of yours ruined my marriage. People believe in all kinds of strange things. It, it doesn't mean that they're crazy. Right. Like, you believe in ghosts? Well, yeah, but that's different. No, it isn't different. It's the same. I can't prove that rocks have feelings any more than you can prove that ghosts exist. Yeah, but I can prove that rocks don't have feelings. How? Because they're not alive, Paul! Neither are ghosts, Fina! This conversation is pointless. Oh, this is so weird. This all happened before. Deja vu? No, 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 no. It's not deja vu. This really, really did happen. I even know where you threw Jasper in the water. Yeah, it's the covered bridge on the way to the mountains. Yeah. I even know how you got Jasper. You went to your car. You took the tire iron out, and you used it to break into the garage. How would you know that? Because you told me. I never told you that. No, not now. Before, the first time it happened, you took me to the bridge so I could say goodbye to Jasper. And then you wanted to go for a drive. So we drove to the mountains. It was a beautiful day and it was sunny. It was morning. And all I could think about was how I wanted to kill you because you killed Jasper. We got to Bell Lake and we were hiking around. And then we came to the clearing. Yeah, I, I clubbed you over the head and I tied you up. Um, when you woke up, we had a long, long talk. Yeah, and then, and then you saw the hive, and they took you. Oh, you're awake. What am I doing here? Oh. I told you that already. What? I explained that to you back at the house. Don't you remember? I told you why you came up here and how. What the hell is going on, Paul? Why am I tied up? He murdered Jasper. You're evil, Sphina. I had to restrain you so you wouldn't murder anyone else before the hive took you. Like you're insane. I'm sorry you feel that way. Paul, come to your senses. And entirely, please, darling. Nice try, Svena, but I'm not falling for it, and you're certainly not going to fool them. They're looking for sincerity, honesty, loyalty. That's why Sheila chose me as one of their agents. Sphina, do you understand how much of a privilege it is to become Hive? I'm your wife, I'm Paul. Wife. I'm your wife. This is ridiculous. Untie me. Well, the method may frighten you, but really there's nothing to what fear. Let me explain it. About? There's a soft spot at the top of your mouth. You're not Very me. small membrane. They're tongues have a powerful <laughs> suction and they efficiently oh, suck the brain right scary. through that opening. Well, physically, <laughs> you will cease to exist. Your body will decompose and technically that is death. But your consciousness, your consciousness will go on forever as part of them. That's what it means to be Hive. They are collectors of consciousness. 
you won't miss your body. They are the hummingbird, and you are the nectar, don't you see? They didn't like the brains of the people I brought before, the, the bums and the hookers. Oh my There's god. Nothing useful there for them. What are you talking They're about? For reason and righteousness. You're they not making any sense. Intelligence. They're looking Paul. for sensitive, clear thinking minds like yours and Kenny's. Kenny? Oh my god, where is he? Paul, what did you do with Kenny? Where is Kenny? Spina, did you know that 70% of the mass of all living things on this planet are just ants? Did you know that? What does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with everything! Don't you understand? How could we as a people have any claim of ownership on this planet when we're such a tiny minority? We have no rights! I understand this! We always thought we were at the top of the food chain! We were wrong! There's always been something here all along, and we've never seen it! It's always existed! And except for the privileged few, myself included, anyone who sees it dies! That's how good they are at what they do! They absorb anyone who sees what you're them! Talking about. That's science fiction, Paul. Science fact. <laughs> a hive is not just one colony, it's millions of colonies spread across our world. Sphina, have you ever wondered where people go when they disappear? Have you ever thought about that? No. Of course not. You've never had a profound thought in your life. This is where people go when they disappear. And you're about to experience that. I don't well, want I'm to. sorry. You don't have a say in the matter. <laughs> oh my God, what is that horrible thing? Well, there's a proper name for it, but it doesn't translate into any human language. I call it the hive. I'm not sure what it's made from. I think that may be beyond our understanding. God, please what do you think? save me! Save me! Oh, God. Oh. Oh, I feel sick. What? Sphina? What are we doing here? You t tied me up and you, you were tr threatening to feed me to this horrible hive. I did? Paul, wait a minute. hurry. Oh, wait a minute. We're in danger. Wait a minute. Untie me, Paul. Oh, for a minute there, I Untie thought I was losing me, my mind. Something, something happened to my sponsor. Hurry, Paul. Untie me. Oh. Paul. Oh, no. I couldn't feel claws and, and teeth on him. Paul, untie me! I feel my sponsor is dead. Oh God, they're gonna be so mad at me for putting him in danger. I gotta get out of here. Sorry, Sphina. Paul, Sphina, I gotta Paul, go. Thanks, Paul, Sphina. Paul, Bye -bye. please, please untie me. For God's sake, let me run for my life. Paul, Paul! <sighs> now. I think you're okay. What is that stuff? Bear spray. Stop a bear from 40 feet. I guess it could stop anything. Man. You saved my life. That's you okay. saved my life, dude. It's okay, man. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, <laughs> oh.
Hey, sorry, pal. I'm gonna need this more than you. What? What are you doing? You bastard! This canister empties completely in approximately four seconds. What the hell good is that? Cloudy, what did you get this time? What is that? Come on, get out of there. Go. Go. 